Hey y'all, what's going on? It is me, Guillotine. Today I've got some footage of all of my matches from the second tournament hosted by the Commonwealth of Independent States. Um, I was invited to play in the tournament from organizer What Is Love. Um, and yeah, I hope you enjoy the clips and let's get into it. Match one taking place over on Hell Valley. Um, I am against VIP member X Zeke X. I'm going for gas first, sending my worker out. Um, I'm today I'm rocking a deck that I've been rocking a lot lately. It's kind of a modification on one of my older ones, inspired by a deck that Pink Foxy uses a lot. Um, it relies heavily on macro and positioning and speed. Um, avoiding direct fights if you have to depending on your opponent's unit composition and if possible heavy surveillance so you can know where your opponent's army is and maybe get some good run buys take out some workers i've been using watchtowers a lot more lately just to save on the gas and um, i won't have to build quite as many owls and if i decide to go for a quick expand i'll be able to hit that chrono just a little bit sooner Getting my scout in, I can see the barracks, I can uh, see that there's two gas, and a spearman being trained. So that kind of gives me an idea of what I want to do back home. Uh, spearmen are a little expensive, so I definitely want to match the gas and send out some spotter units, maybe think about expanding. So I'm sending a bat out to his natural to see if he's expanding or not. I'm also going to send some hounds out. Um, some right here to my natural, see if he's got a unit sitting there. I'll maybe send some out to where his third would be. Um, just to kind of get a feel of what's going on around the map. Make sure there's no hidden towers or anything weird like that. Um, I see that there's no expansion. I get a notification. I think that he uh, had a hound sitting right there. Um, I'm going to continue to scout. I'm going to walk a worker down there to get ready to put down base number two. I still don't know what unit composition I'm up against, so I'm trying to get my bases covered, building some berserkers, sneak bombers. I'm going to send some hounds out to, uh, like I said earlier, where his third would be, and um, sometimes the corners, just to see what's going on, get that surveillance I was talking about earlier. Um, and here in a second, I'll be ready to put down my expansion as soon as I've got 475 so that I can instantly hit Chrono. Um, right here, I noticed that um, he's got some goblin scientists, so I'm going to pivot a little bit and try to start building up on bats. Um, the big rule in this tournament, though, were no runes, or at least no gold runes, and my strategy usually versus goblin scientists is to use bats with second chance. Um, and so it wasn't really that good of a matchup starting out because I couldn't use second chance. Um, bats probably still the way to go, but it just depends on what he has behind those goblin scientists. I don't quite have the surveillance I want right now, so I'm gonna get an owl going out. Um, for surveillance, you can do multiple things. You can have barracks kind of everywhere, which is a little expensive. You can have owls. You can have units in various places all over the map. You can, um, like you saw earlier, you can put like a spotter unit in um, various mineral patches just to see if it gets taken, if it gets expanded, if something shows up, what killed your unit. Um, these are all clues as to what your opponent is doing. Um, and right now I'm gonna start moving down towards uh, taking my third. I can probably assume that he's got a hound down there, so I'm gonna send my pup down. And since I don't really have the minerals right now to build a castle, I'm going to lay down a watchtower first. The plan is to keep building a healthy amount of bats, um, as well as some ground units. I see that sniper moving in with the goblin scientist, so it's time to defend. I'm going to move my units down here, trying to psych him out and get him to use his um, scientist bubbles in all the wrong places, but he ends up having enough to hold me off. Um, scientists right now are just really nasty. I like the idea of the unit, but I think it needs to be tweaked just a little bit um, for some balance. I think the range is too long, or the damage is too high, or the cooldown for the bubble is too short. Something's gotta change. One of my berserkers gets tempted away, which really sucks because I don't have enough Vodun's built yet to fight back against that. 
Um, especially with those Slayers there, which are just really great units. They're very underrated. Slayer and Goblin Scientist um, is just, it takes a lot of, it requires a lot of micro, but it is just a deadly combination, especially with snipers behind them. Mini Dragons are not what they used to be, but they still do a lot of area of effect damage, um, and things are just looking pretty rough for me. Castle goes down. Uh, just trying to survive long enough here because I know that he's sending a lot of money after me, and if I can defend, then I can maybe make a counter push. Finally, a decent amount of Vodun's come out, but I no longer have any meat shields for them. And then with that blessing, it pretty much just dooms them. There's nothing that they can do. More scientists are out, which just makes positioning even harder. I'm building workers down below, just trying to keep that economy rolling throughout this defense. Sending as many hounds as I can. Things are looking quite dire in my main. Just hoping my third can stay up, but he does discover it here and ends up killing this watchtower, which was kind of my last hope. And this is that moment where you look around, survey everything, and realize there's just nothing you can do. GG. Um, luckily, though, this tournament is double elimination, so um, I'm not out yet. So, tough matchup in game one. Good game, Zeke. Um, but let's get on to the next one. Now we're up against our friend Undead. I forgot to record during the actual match, so here's a replay. I kind of blacked out the timestamp there, so, you know, there'd be no spoilers. Um, Undead here puts down a gas. I think was thinking about sending out a scout. Realized he had a gold bag and kind of turned him back around. You never want to send a scout when he's carrying an offering because that's just minerals you're never going to get back. Um, my scout's going out now as well as a watchtower going down. Um, these workers might even get a chance to high five in the middle. It looks like they went out at about the same time. Um, similar pace here. Undead's barracks goes down a little bit quicker than me. I opt to go, though, for a second watchtower that I'm going to put right in my mineral line. I'm thinking here that I might try to get a quick expand, just depending on what I see across the map. Um, I do end up putting a barracks down right here just to be safe. Early on, though, um, if you're wondering, like, oh, my God, what are you going to defend with if, like, a hound rush is coming... Um, any hounds that are getting there a minute in, this is going to be enough to take it out. I'm not too worried about that. His worker coming in now. The watchtower is going to end up killing that worker. Um, he does probably see a little bit. I noticed, though, my worker's in here, and he's sending three workers, one of which that's carrying minerals after it. So I'm kind of just playing around here. I'm going to end up stealing just a little bit of minerals um, because... That's minerals. He'll never get back. Even though that worker dies, um, if it comes down to a final eight minerals, I'm going to win now because I stole it. Sending out a bat to do some uh, reconnaissance. Going to see what's going on. If the expansion goes down, if he tries to put it down while my bat's there, maybe I can stop or delay it. Um, Undead's expansion does go down, though, a little bit before my bat gets there. Um, and I feel pretty safe to put mine down, so I go ahead and do that. And you can hear me uh, hitting Chrono right now. I'm gonna start getting that up as fast as possible while building some units. My first Berserker comes out, rallying workers down. Um, he's got a Ranger out, so that's not great for my bat. Um, especially I'm not going to be able to kill that worker and delay his second castle. So I'm coming over here to get a scout. I see that he's putting a tower down. I'm going to try to kill that worker before he can send a ranger over or get the tower up. He uses lightning right here to kill the bat, which is a trade that I like. Um, the cost of lightning is uh, more than the cost of a bat. So to me... That was a successful trade, a successful scout, um, and now I'm going to start working on my response. Lots of sneak bombers and berserkers for the rangers, just until I can figure out what else he's got in his composition. Um, here, Undead, you can see, is kind of slowly building up his workers for his second castle. Um, that's something, if I'm going to build the castle, I want the workers on it as quickly as possible. What's the point in spending, you know, the... 
the 400 if I'm not going to be investing and in getting my money back quicker. I want a fast return. And since my natural is almost completely saturated, the gas is just about done, um, I'm going to start putting down more barracks just to continue to have vision and also to continue to build units. One thing that will just kill you on a deck like this is if you forget that you need a ton of barracks. You need so many barracks. Um, almost as many barracks as units that you have. A uh, good rule of thumb is you want three in your main and two in every other base that you build. Um, and probably more. Right here I notice this owl that he has in front of my base. Um, but I don't want him to know that I know because I don't have anything to kill it just yet. So I move my, um, units down past the owl to make it look like they're going to maybe go in for an attack. And I want him to think that. And then now that I have a Vodun out, I'm going to walk right back up, shoot the owl and have him go towards my other Vodun and the watchtower. Um, so that I can kill an owl and suddenly that's another 50 gas that I have taken away from my opponent. Uh, you hear Chrono going off again, that's because another castle is going up for me. Um, and then now I notice more owls, so I'm going to go owl hunting. All while I get my third base saturated, another watchtower up, some more barracks. Back over at Undead's base, he has moved all of his units on this ramp, probably because he saw me coming up the middle aisle. Um, and has eyes on my army right now, but all I'm worried about doing is building my economy, killing these owls, forcing him to build more, and continue to waste money. And so right here I'm thinking, I don't want to make the mistake I made in the first game. It's four minutes in, um, it's been pretty quiet, which leads me to believe that he might have something that is going to ruin my day, um, which would be those demons that he's got coming out. Um, and he also has some druids, which are really, really powerful at healing. Um, rangers are very good versus my whole deck, except for the berserkers. So I'm going to kind of move in now that he's probably investing in rebuilding those owls. Um, I can maybe fly in under the radar and go on the attack. The plan is to go down below, check the third before running up into the natural. But a druid aggros, and so we're on. In go the sneak bombers. I think that I may be caught undead a little bit off guard because it does take a while for this demon to activate his ability. And if he would have done it a little bit sooner, I probably would have lost this fight. Um, but the Vodun stay alive just long enough to be able to kill him. Um, this poison also is a little bit late, and it was really detrimental killing all of the Voduns. But the Berserkers are going to hold strong, be able to come in, take out the Watchtower, um, and start moving in to the Natural. He's going to pull the Workers to try to hold off the Berserkers. If you can look up on the mini-map, you'll see that I've expanded into one of the corners. You hear me preach it all the time, never stop expanding. You never know what could happen. Um, you know, he could hold strong here, and I've invested everything into this push, and he could go on the counterattack. Maybe he's got a hidden base somewhere. I don't know. Um, but I'm going to keep fighting. I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to keep sending the Berserkers in um, because I don't really think he can afford more demons right now, um, and that's kind of the only thing that he's got that will be able to do some damage to them. Meanwhile, though, I'm not even paying attention to what's going on down here. Um, I'm working on getting the my fourth completely saturated. I'm going for my fifth. Um, I checked to see if he was in that corner, and he wasn't. So I know that everything he's got is right here in this main. So I just keep rallying troops down there while I keep expanding, keep building army, and just keep applying pressure. I know that there's pretty much nothing right now that's going to stop me from getting this win. Undead's probably having that moment that I had the last game of just surveying the battlefield, um, waiting for these last few units to come out, just hoping and praying for a miracle, but it ain't happening. Not on my watch. Um, Swift gets hit, the rest of my army is going to just keep pushing in, take out these last three barracks that are barely holding on, a watchtower that's still holding on. You can look on the mini-map. It's not going to stop. Undead calls GG, and that it was. On to the next one. It feels good to advance.
over to Sage's Valley. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce this user's name. Makarius, Machariusi, I don't know. I like to get names right, so if you know, let me know down in the comments. Both of us sending out scouts, gas up. He's talking to me about something. I've got no clue what he's talking about, but here's a little tip. Usually early game, if somebody's trying to have a conversation with you, they're trying to do something extra cheesy. So knowing this map, I take my worker and I go south of this hill right here because this is a spot that people like to set up proxies. Um, but he goes on the route that your worker will go kind of automatically just along the top. So I actually miss his worker coming into my base right here. Um, I kind of forgot that I had rerouted and thought, well, I didn't see anything, so he must have not sent a worker. So he does get a worker up into this top island and is going to try to do something a little bit cheesy. Um, I get into his base, though. Everything looks pretty normal. Um, ice tower going down, um, you know, gas, barracks. He's putting a tower up here. It is a ice tower. I've still got no clue that it's there. It's going to go completely undetected um, and will go up. You'll see here in a second. And I don't notice it until I'm sending my worker up to go get ready to start my expansion. This is a moment where a lot of players will freak out like, oh my God, he's got a tower. I didn't even have a barracks down. Um, but I just put down two barracks outside of the range. Um, really hoping he does not have balloons because... I would not have time to recover from that. The sniper comes up and discovers my worker that I had spotting. So I know he hasn't gone for his expansion yet, but it's probably coming. Um, the only thing that this tower is hitting right now, though, is my gas. And buildings hold up pretty well versus ice towers. So if he'll just stay on that, I'm cool with that. I'm just going to build a few units off to the side and... Um, try to have enough to um, run in and kill this ice tower. Meanwhile, I'm sending my worker up to where my third would be, just because if there's a chance I can't get in there and kill it, I really need to get my economy going. But I feel pretty good about it. He hasn't built anything else. And also, berserkers are amazing versus ice towers because the ice kind of has the opposite effect on them. They'll go into their berserker mode and their um, attack speed increases a lot. Back over at my opponent's base, um, I see some ninjas and a sniper. Um, he's building his expansion. Two workers sitting there doing absolutely nothing. Um, at least have a mine at a distance. Um, I feel like I was able to clean up the tower quick enough though to where I'd rather have my expansion right here in my natural. So put it down, hit chrono, and I'm probably going to end up having it saturated around the same time that he does. So it ends up kind of being a waste of time and money for them. Um, it did slow me down a little bit, but it didn't give enough opportunity to be ahead of me at all. We're still both on the exact same pace. We're both sitting at two castles, two barracks. His third is about to go down. Um, I'm getting ready to take my third, though, so... I'm actually about to pull ahead an economy, and he doesn't really have the army to push me um, to, where, to, to really make that early aggression worth it. So my second castle is officially up, um, and things are a little bit quiet. Gets me a little bit worried. Um, you never know what's coming whenever things are quiet. These days, people like to one or two base into flame or ice spirits. Um, they like to tech to having um, ambush or they like to build a bunch of demons, all of which bad news for me. So I don't like when there isn't action at this point. Um, it's usually when I'll start to maybe go and look for some. He's got an owl sitting right here just outside of my line of vision. So I don't see the kind of blurry ball floating around right here. But he does have eyes on my army. He does see what I'm working with. And right now, I don't really know what he's working with. Then this poison goes down, which really blows because he ends up killing almost all of my troops. And you can see on the minimap, he's going to start moving out. He's going to set up in the middle and really try to control the map a little bit he's got the mini dragons the ninjas snipers also with berserkers so this is going to be a very tough matchup for me and that poison did set me behind whereas earlier i felt like 
I wasn't really all that behind. Now I've got to replenish all of my army. Um, I do have my third up and going, um, but I would have liked to have already had it up and not had to have spent that money and replacing the army um, that he had killed. He's sending in some ninja shadows now, which are kind of a pain, but it does let me know that his army is probably pretty close, and I did suspect that he'd be going on a push after that poison went down. Me realizing that I kind of dropped the ball and didn't have enough barracks down, start putting more, um, and I'm sending in some bats around the backside to try to get a little bit of some harassment and distraction. I don't want to get pushed right now. Um, if I can get him to turn his army around or at least just like hold off attacking me for just a few moments so that I can, you know, get a good footing. This ice tower does go down though and ice towers are very good versus bats um, unless you can blow it up which right here I try to do and don't. But it did seem like he pulled those mini dragons and delayed his attack maybe by a little bit, giving me time to get base number three saturated, um, continuing to build army, um, lots of sneak bombers, bats, vodoons, pretty much the whole deck um, is going to be needed for this one. He's trying to take 12 o'clock, which is the big power position in this map. Um, and place a map control, keeping me from getting down to the bottom spots. Um, more shadows going in, but I'm starting to realize that I'm not going to be able to macro very hard um, this game. I'm a little bit too late to the punch. He's got a lot in the middle of the map. Right here, he's going to deny that bottom spot. Um, I'm going to have to think of something to come out of just the three bases that I have right now. Um, I sent these bats up, and I think that he noticed them because he pulls his army back. Um, but I'm going to send them straight up to 12 o'clock and start harassing which really saved me. If you can see on the mini map, it also caused those mini dragons to come up. And so I'm going to keep these bats here. I'm still playing the same game. I'm trying to get good value out of cheap units and delay his attack until I see the mini dragons come in. Um, and then as soon as I notice it, I'm going to pull them off and use the terrain to my advantage. I'm going to bounce around and go to the next base. I was a little bit late though because... You can see on the map also I'm sending a dropship over to his natural expansion because he's got his entire army chasing four bats, two of which are almost dead. And while this is happening, I'm able to load up a dropship, run it across the bottom of the map. I see an expansion going up and so I'm going to start rallying troops to that and then I'm going to drop some sneak bombers and a berserker right up into his natural. I'm able to kill all of the workers. Um, and start putting damage in on the castle. He's forced to pull all of his army back home, which is finally going to give me the space that I need to get out of my natural. I uh, hit chrono because I'm going to start cranking troops. I'm going to send units down to his um, base down here, like I just said. I'm going to try to send some troops up to the top. He realizes I'm going on the attack, pulls his army back out of his base, He's going to let that natural fall, trying to save the other two. In come the sneak bombers. They're able to take out most of the ninjas, but they do pretty much nothing versus berserkers. Then the poison hits and my Vodun start to go down. And blessing can sometimes feel like it lasts forever, especially when you have units that are already pretty tanky. Right here, he tries to get on top of my army by sending his mini dragons into a trance and then releasing, um, which does a lot of splash damage. However, while they were in a trance, um, they're invincible and can't be attacked, so my army was able to take out everything he had on the ground, and now my berserkers are going to basically ignore all of that damage from the mini dragons and walk straight up and start doing some damage. This one up top is still hacking away. Going to go in and take 12 o'clock. I've already expanded into the bottom left. And oh, how the turntables. Um, I don't want him to get back up to full max supply. Um, and he's really low on workers, but he is floating a lot of money right now. Um, not sure what he's spending it on, but I'm going to apply pressure. I'm going to go um, start taking out these barracks that are kind of scattered around. Um, make those investments worthless. 
it looks like we're going to have another clash here with quite a few mini dragons and berserkers. Um, but my army's coming out right now pretty much non-stop. Poison goes down. I do try to micro out of it, but quite a bit of Odunes do still go down. Um, berserkers, though, are putting in work. And while all of this is happening, I'm able to secure 12 o'clock. Um, so even though a lot of Vodunes are going down, I'm going to continue to send units across the map. Eventually, they're going to overrun the mini dragons. Um, he doesn't quite have enough to where there's just like a death ball. And his economy is really suffering. I'm going to go in for the kill and um, just keep rallying. Um, I know that he's got a newer base up above, which is usually what I would go for. But I'm already here. I'm going to just kill as many of these barracks as possible so he can't make more units. Um, right here, he lets me know that apparently he's using the wrong deck, even though all of it is hard counters to me. But whatever. On to the next one. So here we are up against Eucalyptus. Um, this one was a bit long, so I've got it sped up. But we are into the semifinals and the loser's bracket. So if I win this one and the next one, um, I get to go on to the grand finals. I tend to perform very well on this map so long as I don't let myself get cheesed. So right now I'm sending out some spotters just to make sure that that doesn't happen. There's a lot of places on this map to set up the cheese. And so you just have to kind of make sure that it's not going to happen to you. Uh, Eucalyptus sending in a early harass with two hounds and an imp. Able to kill a worker, slow down my expansion just a little bit. I send up this berserker to try to aggro the imp down so that I can kill it. And now I am going for my expansion, as is Eucalyptus. We're using very similar decks, if you haven't noticed. Both using Swift and Chrono for our spells. Um, both heavy on Hounds and Sneak Bombers and Vodunes. He's got Imps as opposed to Bats. Um, but everything else is pretty similar. He's got Ice Towers instead of the Watchtower and Knights instead of Berserkers. Um, so both wanting to play fast and aggressive and heavy macro. Um, it should be a fun one. We're sitting at four minutes and both of us have our third castle up and almost saturated. Considering the matchup, I want to push before my fourth castle is up. I like to put it down as I'm attacking. Um, that way, as I'm done with my attack, I've got a four base economy now. Um, I accidentally hit this lookout tower and tip him off that I'm coming up the right side so he's able to respond to it and my units take a just very awkward angle around this cliff and he's able to wipe my entire army and we'll see him now going on the offensive. Luckily though, I've got another swarm ready to go so in come the sneak bombers and the Vodoons and berserkers and able to hold strong, not really losing any workers. Got base number four coming quite along, yet so does he. Um, I've sent out some spotters uh, to both edges of the map to decide when and where I want to try to expand. Sometimes I go heavy on one side, sometimes I do one on each. This time I elected to do one on each because since he had the speed of the knights, I wanted to be able to invest heavily in the side that he didn't attack when he eventually would. So I'm putting some pressure up the middle. Um, the ice towers are doing a good job slowing down the majority of my units, except for the berserkers. Um, however, getting some good harassment in. Meanwhile, I do have castles up on both edges. They are a bit exposed, um, and Eucalyptus has gone for his fifth. So I am sitting at a six base economy. Eucalyptus is sitting at five. He goes for a six and discovers my sixth. Um, I rush in to try and take out his base number five. He's going to come to the defense, though. I'm able to kill all of the workers, but the castle is going to hold strong. But killing those workers is almost just as valuable. If you take a look at the economy down below, um, I am four times Eucalyptus' economy. So even though this right here isn't looking too great and my castle up here is going to fall, I did go in. I took my seventh base. Um, which will now be reduced to six when this one falls down, but I'm just ahead. I'm able to send units into pretty much every base, just a few here, a few there, some hounds, some berserkers, and just keep him having to run around. 
when you have two armies like this, you want to be the aggressor and not the defender. You want the other army to have to constantly, constantly needing to reposition so that they can defend. I'm able to kill this worker as he tries to put up base number 6, which effectively has him waste that chronoblast, and my economy is currently sitting at 50 times the size of Eucalyptus. Of course, I don't know this during the game, and it feels much closer than this, and what good is money if you don't spend it? So that does not mean that it's over. Um, it can definitely go either way still. Um, the map is still split right down the middle. I just have to keep doing my thing. Um, you know, anytime I see workers, I send in units to take them out. I'm sending my workers in up at the top left because they've mined everything out and have nothing to do. And so I'm going to send them in to go kill a castle. And I think right about now, Eucalyptus sees this happening and calls GG. That is it. Moving on to the finals of the loser's bracket. But wait, there was a technical issue. We forgot to play on equalized levels, so a rematch is ordered. So, game number two versus Eucalyptus. We are now over on Sage's Valley. Um, I went with the same deck here. I think I should have swapped decks. I really thought heavily about it, but um, I wanted to. I had two decks planned to use in the next games, and I wanted to save them. I didn't want to show them um, because everyone's watching these. Everyone is studying their opponent, but Eucalyptus made the smart play here and changed decks and picked a deck that was really hard for me to counter. I end up going down here and so I get knocked out in the semifinals. I'm spoiling it because it was not that exciting of a match. I pretty much knew what was going to happen as soon as I saw um, the units that Eucalyptus was using. Um, it ends up being pretty quick. I just kind of get steamrolled to be honest with you. Um, I did want to take a second though to thank What is Love for one inviting me and two um, organizing an amazing tournament. Anyone can compete in these tournaments, you just have to sign up. And they are officially recognized by the developers of this game, and so in-game rewards are handed out. Um, you could have won a battle pass by competing in this, so keep an eye out for the next one if you want to try your luck or just want to make friends. It has been really cool though playing this game with such an established community from the Commonwealth of Independent States, considering the um, current events that are happening over there it's been really cool to see players from russia and the ukraine showing support and love for one another um and so i lost this one but you know what it makes more sense for a player that's actually from that region to win this um and i'm honored just to be part of it congratulations to alessandro who ended up winning who is a fellow youtuber um putting out content far more often than i am um and an amazing player um i wanted Alessandro to be the one that knocked me out so that I could maybe be on his channel um, and so that I could feel a little bit better about myself. But um, Eucalyptus is no slouch and is also a great player. Um, hats off to him. Um, I'm going to shut up and let you finish watching the rest of this match. Um, and that's going to be it for me. So I will holler at you all next time. Later.